Let's see what's in this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, look at that, right out of the gates. A nice Bojack crankbait. Oh, look at that color, too. Retro bassin, kicking some ass in wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. I'm sitting here today. We are back in Bacon's Bait and Tackle in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I've got here a pretty cool vintage Plano 737 tackle box. However, this is not just any 737 tackle box. This is a very special tackle box, or should I say a tackle box owned by a very special individual. There is a nameplate on here, and I want to show you guys this. Yes, this is a 757 Plano box, formerly owned by Jack Smithwick. I don't know what's inside. I can only imagine that we've probably got a Bojack or two, or who knows what else in here. So let's crack this thing open. <laughs> oh man. I can get her open. So there we go. What I love about this tackle box, by the way, and I've actually got a couple of these at home. I love the organization, the fact that you just had these drawers that pulled out. The one trick was this door sometimes would get a little bit stiff. This one actually works fine, but these drawers may or may not come out with a little bit of creaking. So we'll see. Should we start low or start high? Start we'll start low? All right. Mike says to start low. Ho, ho, ho. So what do we have here? So we got some Mr. Twister frogs. I guess uh, even Mr. Smith would like to use a little frog from time to time. Pretty cool baits, pretty cool baits. Not what I expected to find right out of the gates. He huh? did work with Mr. Twister. Uh, oh, so yeah, they- He made baits for Mr. Twister. So this might have, so when did the frog come out? Mm, I don't know if they're always giving to Mr. Twister. The old hog frog, okay, yeah. gotcha. Very cool, yeah, so that was uh, so a couple Mr. Twister baits there in the bottom row. And, oh, a little spinnerbait action. And so, I don't know that that is a no-no spinnerbait. It's not. Okay, so just a spinnerbait with an old school skirt that looks like a, I don't know if it's a vinyl skirt or not, but that skirt's definitely uh, aged like a fine uh, Budweiser. So, nothing, nothing crazy there. Uh, we got some more uh, skirtage going on down here. So I see what you're saying about the old living yeah, rubber. Yeah, that was ours. There's a, a nice living rubber skirt that's um, not alive anymore. But now that is an interesting spinnerbait head. Is that a no-no? Jack probably made that itself. No, that's not a no-no. But that's a pretty cool compact little spinnerbait, by the way. And check out that tear-shaped blade. That's unique. It's like a longer version of a Colorado blade. Um, almost sort of like the best of both worlds. A little bit of the flash of a willow, but a little bit of the thump of a Colorado. That's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so here we've got uh, a little inline spinner. It looks sort of like a Deadly Dudley blade on there. That blade is from a uh, Smithwick uh, walking scorpion. Ooh, okay. Oh, yeah. A Smithwick walking scorpion. And he used, that is a no-no head. Okay, oh, okay. yeah, yep. okay. Unpainted or just lost its paint, or lost its paint. That's pretty wild. All right, three more drawers to go. Uh, let's see what's in this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, look at that, right out of the gates. A nice Bojack crankbait. Oh, look at that color too. That is, that's like a Rayburn red color, isn't it? Flat orangey red Oof. oh man that's a good looking bait oh awesome okay mike what's that i have no idea that 
looks sure. like a piggy perch or that's weird. That's a oh, thin Lord. little, no idea, little uh, little sort of lipless pico perch crankbait looking bait there. And I think it might be another one. So no idea what that dude is. A lot of, a lot of people would send Jack uh, lures that they made or want to think about making them for him to try out and you know, tell them what, what, what okay. he Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Another bow jack with a little bit different color there. That's a little bit more of a crawfish pattern. I've never seen them with a brown top. Ooh, brown top. What's that called? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a... It's an orange coach dog with a brown top. Oh, that's a pretty crank right there. These have a nice a nice weight to them. They're not like not as heavy as you'd think for a big, big bait like that. I bet these things really wobble. I've never actually cast one of these before. That's a good looking bait. Okay, so I see here some old rogues. So what's the story with these guys? When did Jack come up with these bad boys? I'm not sure when the, when the first rogue came out, but it was, uh, I'm guessing the 50s. Okay. Uh, it, and it was yeah. his, was it his first plastic bait? Uh, yes, it was. And what was the deal? Was it sort of to compete with the uh, the Rapala? Rapala, mm -hmm. that Rapala they sold thousands of Rapalas, hundreds of thousands. And it turned out to be just a real good bait. But it's a rat. They they made them in rattling, uh -huh. and unrattling. Uh, you can shake it. That's that's. Oh, that's, that's, that's a, a silent. That's yeah. an early one. That is an early one, and it's just a straight up silver chrome. Later on, they put a red dot on the back of this to make it rattle. Okay, so that one's a knot rattling. So there's a chrome with sort of a little pink back. Yep, early. Silent. Oof. So we got chrome, a little blue back. I think these are all going to be silent, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see a red dot back there. And there's another one. Oh, this looks like a, a copper. A white belly. Yep, silent again. Okay, so this one, I do see a black dot. Does that mean that rattles? Or is that spin? It should be a red dot. Okay. They put black dots on just about everything. So that's a black dot. So that guy does not suspend, but a nice little black dot one. Nice chrome with a purple back. These guys are fishers. Who fish these guys? So how do you like the fishing rod? What's your like a spinning rod with some light line? Yeah, What's the? Yeah, you almost have to. They're so, they're so light. Get any distance, you got to be real good with the bait catcher. And yeah, I, I think that's this mistake I made early is I'd fish these things with a bait cast and I couldn't cast them and I was using such heavy line they didn't have good action on them. So we'll put these guys back in here. All right, so what's going on with this? Those are kind of rare, those are clear. I see some yeah. clear. It's a special plastic to make a clear bow jack. Normally they're uh, cream colored. Oh. Yeah. That's really cool though, because you can see the internal workings. It basically has to had one big weight right there. And that lip's almost inserted. That's interesting, actually. That's not the, what... The body's in two halves glued together with your hook hangers. And then uh, the, the bill is inserted after they're assembled. And they're glued in separate. Of all the Smith with baits, it's a bummer that they discontinued this one. How long, when did they When did they stop selling this when thing? When Brad took over in, what, 92? Okay. 93. So there's another clear. Or as I call old school clear. Yep, yep. <laughs> They're hard to find. It's a rainbow trout. A rainbow trout. It's a metallic rainbow trout, that's right. Yep. Oh, look at that. A metallic it's rainbow like trout. Woo! That's a pretty bait. Mm -hmm. And then this one is a. That rattle's still going now. They're all supposed to rattle, but some of these have oxidized so bad you can't hear them. So that rattle gets swollen. The, yeah, the, the, the oxidation yeah. comes off the rattle and takes up all the space. That's happened to some old traps. Mm -hmm. So this guy, look at that. So that's like a, what is that, a Tennessee shad? No, uh, that's close to it, but it's not. Uh, I forget what the color is. Oh, that's a pretty looking bait too, though. That, But it's got sort of a chartreuse yellow side, black, mm -hmm. brown top, orange belly. That's a good looking bait. 
And then what do we got? One more, three of the clears in there. Oh, that's awesome. Bojack City, man. These are, these are tough. These are tough. All right, two more. <laughs> You're gonna see some fifth floors in here, huh? Ooh, a little, little water gator stuff, huh? A little smaller boat jack. So let's see here. Okay, so first off, yeah, we do have a smaller boat jack. So what's that size called? Uh, I call it mid size. It, it, there's one smaller than that. It's got that little thump. Yeah. Were these made out of butyrate? Uh, the low pressure plastic. You okay. Know, smells. They smell horrible. I mean, if you have the raw plastic. Oh, <laughs> ultralight Bojack. Little, little, probably it's probably quarter ounce. Look at that little lip though. Oh man, that's awesome looking bait. Wow. You could throw that thing on a little spinning rod. So what else do we have here? So we got some more Bojacks, normal size. Yeah. Normal size. There's a nice chartreuse with a black back. Ooh, there's the old midsize. That looks like a 3 8 ounce to me. I'm not sure of the quality weight. I've never cast one of these. I bet it fishes a lot like a big O, huh? I think it's better as far as fish catching. Look at that one. Oh man, that's a good color. So what's that? Is that like a, that's actually like a bandit? Or I don't know, a bandit's got some colors that are sort of like that. Red with a couple stripes on it. Oof, man, nice. Oh, there we go. That's cool. That is a tailgater. Notice it's got a treble hook here and a little spinner on the back. So what's cool about this bait, it does sort of have the general profile of a rattle trap, but it's got that weird tail in the back. And then the, I've always been intrigued by the lips of these. It looks, it, it gets, yep. yeah, look at that. You can see how it's expanded. What well, does that make it dig deeper or does that make it wobble well, it's wider? Bend when they, it makes it, it, makes it uh, wobble side to side a little better. But, okay. Um, it's a little more resistant. It gets hit in stumps and, and structure. And that eye ties, that, that line ties a little bit higher on this bait than you yeah, see on a rattle some trap. Screw eyes. Yeah, screw eyes that one. Cause that's why, yeah, it definitely sits a little bit higher than like a rattle trap does. Mm -hmm. so rattle trap have a hook hanger. Ooh, so that's good color. Look at that. So that's, woo, man. A little perch pattern. And that one does not have the spinner. So that's got the double trebles. What do you like better, the spinner or the treble? I like the double, the double hook. Yeah, with a big bait like that, you almost want two shots to get them, right? Or yeah, six. The front and make it Ooh, there's a nice little chrome that's just, gator. Jack chromed it as, uh, at his shop. He had a vacuum metalizer. And it was like an iron lung. He'd, they'd put the baits on the little racks and slide them in there and then, then hang the gold tags, if they're going to gold plate it, or silver tags in oh. there. They shut the door and tighten the iron lung and you had a window on the front and they would pull a vacuum and they'd run an electrical charge through there and it vaporized <laughs> and covered everything in there with metal. It's neat. One day a fly went in there, a house fly, and it was sitting on top of the uh, sprue and when they vacuum metalized it, it completely turned that fly to metallic. The chrome it, fly. It sat on Jack's desk for a long time. <laughs> oh, so there's another chrome one. So yeah, this one I didn't notice. It does say uh, water gator right on the side there. And then the other side, I think it just says Smithwick. Whew, that's a good, that one's pretty minty there. That one has not been cast too much. So these are cool, these little gators, huh? Look at that. It's like a little uh, quarter ounce steel there. That's nice looking. Sort of a coach dog color there with a spinner on the back. Nice. Covering up the tail. And this one, is that chrome as well? Yeah, that's chrome as well. I wouldn't sure that was a Smoky Joe. Yep. Oh man, awesome. 
Yeah, these seven these seven thirty sevens, and I've got oh, I've got a seven fifty seven, and it's the same deal. All right, this will be the one. I will see. Oh. All right, so here's an old school one. So there is the old Devil's Horse. So they had two different sizes, right? They had a thinner one and a thicker one. Well, they had about four sizes. Okay, but two that I was see two that I was aware of growing up. One was the, this is the little bigger one. How do you cast these guys? Because I got to tell you. Easy. Yeah. Okay, so these guys you could just put on a bait caster. Those have the Mickey Mouse props on the round Mickey Mouse ears. Yes. Now, by the way, so look, I noticed that Old Ben's had more of these props than the other kind, right? Yeah, they, Smithwick and Old Ben's both use both kinds. They run out, they just grab the bag of the other ones. Which kind of prop do you like better, the Mickey Mouse or the like more the Mickey, pointy? I like the Mickey Mouse. Then, then, then there was one that was on a dying flutter that I liked the best. It was really tapered. And uh, I kind of put those on, I'll, I'll revamp them with those blades. I've got a dine flutter without the blades. I've got the one where it's just really yeah, just, what tail weight? just tail weight. Yeah. yeah, but I don't have any bladed ones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I got to bring a tackle box next time I come. <laughs> but that, I like this little blades. That, I bet that's a little bit more of a subtle. It is. It's just like a little, little subtle. That's a good looking color there. More of a natural. Yeah. On black shad. So he liked the chrome ones. Look at this. He's got a bunch in that same chrome pattern. That's a good color. So now there's a size that I am not familiar with at all. That's like a little three and a half inch deal. It's an RA twelve hundred. What was the what was the number on these guys? RB, the main? RB okay. That's a that's a cute little bait. That's like more of three and a half inch or so. So there's another one in that twelve hundred style. I like that a lot actually. Of course, if I have trouble casting a regular rogue, I'd have, really have to wing this thing. <laughs> nice black shad color. I don't know. I kind of digging that purple back. That's different. You don't see that every day. I kind of like that purple. Now I know why this drawer wasn't opening up anymore. They had too many lures in there. Ooh, so this is interesting. A clear rug. So that's pretty cool. So was this just one he didn't paint, or is this just no, the way it was a, supposed they made to be? Clear on purpose because the head came out clear of the Spook series. The clear torpedoes, and so he had to have a clear road. So it looks like so. This is this a two-piece body with a one-piece lip? Is that look the way that is? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Halves put together and the bills put in last. That's pretty cool. You can kind of see the way that it was all. So it's got a screw tail, mm -hmm. and then these other two are just what hook, what what? Hook it says a hook hanger. Okay. Why would some use a hook hanger versus the old They're screw real tail? Easy. They have like a little tit sticking up, and they just put a figure eight hook hanger and then glue them together and you're through. You don't have to put screws in them. Are, are both of these as solid of a connection? Yeah. Okay, so neither of these are gonna come. Yeah, you're gonna, you'll rip the paint in half on the hook hanger. And then hooks will probably go straight long before anything else happens. Okay. That's really cool to see those in clear though. So there we go, another old school. So this is a silent box of rogues. You could shake this box, it would, not, it, it would not rattle too much. So what made him put the rattles in the baits? Uh, rattle trap came okay. out and baits started making noise. So he, uh, you can't put much rattles in a, in a road. No. Sinking it. So uh, he used the little uh, scoops they used to put gunpowder in shells. Yes. And, that's, and he, he fluffed it down to where it had just the right amount and they'd scoop out the shot and put it in there. Bird shot, smaller than bird shot. I was gonna say, it ain't putting number 12 in this thing. Maybe rat shot or something. I was gonna, it, it had to be something tiny, right? Maybe. There's another nice silent one. Now this one looks a little bit different. Yeah, that's a tough color. You're not gonna see that. So yeah, that's a, that is definitely a tough color. So it's got like a red belly, sort of a gray top to it. Man. I'd say it's not a catalog color, for sure. That is not a catalog color. So how did it come up with the eyes? That's, I always like the eyes on the rogues. 
he just always liked that style of eye. Was he, was, he was 18, he was drawing them on there. Okay. And uh, Jack had kind of almond shaped eyes and blue, they were blue. And so he, you'll see a lot of blue eyes on all his face. <laughs> That's a pretty cool. So, how did you end up with with this tackle box? Uh, Jack, Jack and I fit together, and he just uh, he didn't he didn't want them. He just he said, "Hey." Yeah, he was cleaning it out. He had bait boxes of bait. He wouldn't believe. He did, probably some family member or the ladies gave him this tackle box for Christmas. And, uh, Put his and name on it. Tell it really wasn't functional. So Jack, it wasn't it didn't work. He just. <laughs> <laughs> we went fishing, you'd just take a cardboard box and just reach in there. You know, this is a cardboard box. Full of baits. Yeah. The, the, probably the first thing is George stuck up on him. He probably got rid of it, huh? No, no, I, I know Jack. And he, he had a few words to say about it, I'm sure. <laughs> Either way, that's cool. Um, well, all right, Bass and Buds, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little walkthrough of Jack Smithwick's own 737 Plano Tackle Box. That was pretty cool. It was cool to see the old water gators. It was cool to see those Bojacks and definitely some of those tough colors. Uh, so thanks again to Mike Bacon for letting me hang out at the tackle shop and go through some of his old school gold. Till next time, Bass and Buds, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'.